Today is Inktober Day 5 and you guys supplied me with the inspiration for today. Um, I asked you yesterday on my community, um, what are you planning to do? Today's prompt is map. There's some obvious ideas, but I'm busy, so I don't have time for those kind of high effort things I wanted to do. So what are good suggestions? And there were all sorts of brilliant suggestions, things like treasure maps and linking up to monsters and creating splashes on the page and creating things coming out of that. Um, and the one which stuck with me was actually from Martin. Um, so thank you, Martin, who um, I'm paraphrasing, but basically said, do a mind map of all the mad things going on in your head. And I'll take that as a compliment. And uh, as a compliment, I thought, let's do it. So here is a little mind map. Um, I filled a page full of thoughts about sketching. Um, I'm going to try and link as many different videos which are related to those thoughts down below in the description. And uh, for the next few minutes, I will talk you through the madness that was going through my head as I sort of filled up this page. So I wanted to start something I knew and that some people would recognise me for, I guess. And so I thought I'd start, you know, what's a comfortable little thing which can be in the middle of my mind map? And of course, that is my happy place. That is sketching sort of architectural type buildings and using this kind of loopy, semi-abstract line work. And so I put these two little things in the middle of my page and then thought, right, what is that? What is it about this which I enjoy? And that is the urbanism. I enjoy playing with perspective. And I like that it's loose because I also like playing in this same style when it's not urbanism. Big thing as well within that looseness is the idea of simplicity and people. Often we overcomplicate, um, but they can be really simple. And what is it that makes them easy to make simple? Well, just being relaxed, enjoying it and having fun. But we'll come back to simplicity later because my mind went off on another track. It's not just simplicity which is important. It's also creating something else. So hatching was a thought and I just did a little bit of hatching thought. Why do we like hatching? Well, it gives you that contrast, that value, it gives you texture. But it also adds more than that. Um, or at least for me, it adds more than that. So I wonder if you can get what I'm drawing here and understand the context before I get to it. Um, these things are all really important concepts, which I covered loads in my video. So I'll, again, link loads of things below, which you can find. But can you tell what I'm saying here? What I'm saying with this little doodle about what um, hatching adds to our sketches and why I think it's so important, why it's come up so early in my little mind map. That's drama. So if, if you didn't work it out, um, that's supposed to be a little theatre, a stage, a couple of people on it and a big audience in front of it. And I said we'd come back to simplicity um, because this mind map isn't supposed to flow logically. It's, it is just a brainstorm, if you like. And key to simplicity is shapes. And if you've seen me before, you know I bang on about shapes. You can create anything out of shapes. So here's a little bird uh, just constructed from simple shapes. And yes, he's geometric but he's just shapes. It's really that easy. It's just shapes, but then hatching. So I tried to link things together already. Um, and what about the quality though? And that this could mean a lot of things. And we'll we'll get to what quality of, of art means later. But for now, we're talking about the quality of line. And there are two really common types of pen we use. Fine liners, they're precise. That quality of line is their precision and actually their uniformity. While with fountain pens, you get this flow and this Flex, a very different thing. Over here, I've sort of thought I'll experiment with these ideas. So using my fine liner, I can create these modern angular sharp lines, like a, a city scene. With the same fine liner, I can actually create other quality of line. This time it's wobbly and it's sort of fragile. For me, that feels old or loopy, soft, dilapidated. So there's loads we can do, loads we can play with. Lots of ideas. And I thought, ah, these are ideas. Let's just put a light bulb in there. So no, that light bulb has no other relevance to that thought except to fill a little gap. But I think that's OK as well. When we're trying to fill up a page, do some convenient things. Um, I just thought um, in this little bit, I'd just do an experiment with different fine liners. So it's important to, remem to remember that when we talk about quality of line, it's not necessarily just about what we do. It's also about what we're using. Um, and 
one thing I noticed changing between these fine lines is I've always thought of them as very obvious changes, but here on this paper, it's just quite a subtle change. Anyway, off to another track now, and I was like, well, what else is there which makes our, our sort of line work interesting? Well, one of it is composition. And there's a few ways we think, and often we think about the rule of thirds, we think about the Fibonacci spiral, but there's also like the L composition, the pyramid composition. Again, these are all things I've covered in in-depth videos, but I thought it's an interesting thing just to, I was trying to narrow down really what I think makes fun, what makes fun in my sketches, what I enjoy doing. So I then loop back to hatching. Um, what else does hatching add? We've talked about contrast, texture, drama. Also adds shade, and shade gives shape as material, and it adds a lot of context. The context of like, is this tree in spring? Is it in autumn or winter? It's got the same shape, but a dramatically different texture. Um, the other thing is it adds feeling, individuality. It's an opportunity to just explore and have fun. Again, now I sort of thought, I'll fill up this space. So I drew a pig, and I've written just a pig. There's nothing special. Like There's nothing special about that light bulb. And here we move on to me thinking about individuality. And one thing that comes to mind is people's thoughts. Now, do you get this reference? So this reference is uh, a tractor, an old lady, and she's smoking some drugs. I'll give you a few seconds. And if you've seen my channel, you may have seen me referencing this comment a few times. It's a rather uh, individual comment where someone basically said uh, this is all rubbish it's stupid anyone who's watching this channel is stupid because actually I used to think it was good but now I recognize it is rubbish like an old lady drawing on a tractor taking drugs and you know well sure but actually I think this comes into the feeling the individuality I've sketched here my house and my very abstract house in the top right hand corner and which of those is good? Is it the one which is sort of a vaguely accurate, simple representation? Is it the very loose, abstract, mad one in the top right hand corner? Um, and really, it doesn't matter because it's, for me, not about that. I'm not trying to go out and be the best in the world. I'm trying to make sure that I enjoy it. And also, actually, a big part of what I'm doing is to make sure that other people enjoy it as well and that people feel able to enjoy what they want. That said, there is a place for complexity, moving on from simplicity. There is a, a place where we can spend a long time building up relatively realistic things, like this eye, which is relatively realistic. But it doesn't have to be. You don't have to move on from simple art to complex art. It is absolutely fine to continue doing whatever you want to do. And I've long since learnt that for me, I want to do what I want to do. Creativity is that kind of gift. That's the idea that I move to in my mad spiral into um, whatever this is, whatever abyss of, of ink sketching this is. But I was sort of thinking, well, it's a gift both to myself. Um, so, you know, the same as having a chocolate cookie or two and a, a cup of coffee. That is a gift to myself. It's also a gift to other people. But um, like with other gifts to other people, it's only a gift if it is sort of freely given. Otherwise, it's payment. So if what you're giving other people you hated, what's the point? You know, you I, I like giving people gifts, but um, I don't like necessarily giving things that people are demanding of me. So when we are thinking about creativity, if we are creating for other people, just remember this is a, a gift. It, it has to be a two-way process otherwise it's it's not well this is this is all my philosophy but it's not for you anymore it's not you know actually a real gift it's just a payment um there is room for that of course if you're a hundred percent professional artist you sometimes have to make these payments anyway let's stop getting depressive i i'm just trying to be uplifting here and i've i've gone down a spiral again so i thought um Let's just have a bit more fun. I played with the idea of what kind of tool before, and I thought, let's just let's just sketch my my equipment again. It seemed like a nice space to do it, and um, the equipment we're using is is really important. And from here, one of the things I thought, you know, often what I talk about is uh, the choice of equipment in terms of how it affects your art, and I've got loads of videos on that. But there's also uh, other things. And one thing I've I've compared there an ink bottle to ink cartridges and put the world next to it. That's my little nod to being eco-friendly. 
And then I sort of moved on to like, um, art isn't just about creating art. This is you know, a bit tangential again, sorry, but this is, you can thank Martin for saying, do whatever craziness comes into your brain. So actually what else is art is what I'm thinking here. So art is a, a workout for the brain. It's for me a sense of purpose. I like having goals. It's why things like Inktober are quite fun. That's why I like combining this YouTube channel with my art. I can create goals. It's also great for spending time with around people. So there's Betty uh, under my feet, as she almost always seems to be these days when I'm drawing. And I've just sort of thought, you know, family time. Art can be creativity, can be part of family time. It's also something I really like about art is that sort of flow space, that flow state where time passes, but you don't notice it, um, which is something I'm sure we can all recognise. And it's that kind of, it goes back to that happy place. It can also be relaxing. I don't like it when it's stressful. Sometimes it is stressful, but I'm really always hoping at least that it'll be relaxing. Um, and lastly, fun. And if you're not sure what that is, that is supposed to be a pawn and a knight from a board game or chess. So if you think that's fun, uh, then no judgment. <laughs> and there you go. That is my absolute bizarre tangential mind map. I hope that's given you some thoughts. Check out the links below and I'll see you tomorrow. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.